Okay, section number three, factor by grouping. Okay, so how we factor by grouping is we group terms with a common factor, separate the polynomials with an addition sign, factor the Graham's common factor from each grouping, and remove the binomial common factoring. Okay, so we need to be good at binomial common factoring in order to do factoring by group. Okay, I'll reference these steps as we go through the first couple examples. Okay. So they probably don't make sense that first time I just said them, but you'll see what I mean, okay? So I want to factor ax plus ay plus 2x plus 2y, okay? You'll notice I can't all four of these terms together. There's nothing I can common factor from all four of them, okay? They don't all have an a, they don't all have an x, they don't all have a y, and they don't all have a 2, okay? So we can't common factor anything from all of them. But if we group terms together that have a common factor, okay? So these first two terms both have an a, and these second two terms both have a 2. So if I group, if I put those into two groups, okay, I'll be able to do some work. So let's first do that. So group terms with a common factor, okay. So I'm going to put ax plus ay together, and I'm going to put 2x plus 2y together. Okay, and I have to separate these with an addition sign. Okay, so I group terms together that have a common factor. Okay, and I separate them with an addition sign because we remember if we add polynomials, we're allowed to just drop the brackets. So if I dropped these brackets, I'll be right back at our original question. Okay, so this is equivalent. Putting that addition sign between them keeps the equation equivalent. Okay, that's important. Okay, now what we have to do is remove the greatest common factor from each group. Okay, so look at just this group. The greatest common factor is just an a. Okay, so if I take an a out from both of those terms, I'm left with an x plus y. And the greatest common factor of this group, I can take out a 2. Okay, if I take out a 2, I'm left with an x plus y. Now you'll notice this looks just like a binomial factoring question. Okay, and in fact, the fourth step is to remove a binomial common factor. So if I remove an x plus y, I'll be left with a plus 2, okay? Because when I divide both these terms by x plus y, the x plus y's will cancel, and I'll be left with an a plus 2, okay? So there's my answer. Now, at this point, you might say, hey, I could have, why didn't we group the ax and the 2x together? Those both have x's. And the ay and the 2y together, those both have y's. Let's, let's try that and see if we get to the same answer, okay? So we're going to group the ax and the 2x together. So ax plus 2x. And we're also going to group the ay and the 2y together. Good. You remember, separate them, with, ugh, separate them with an addition sign. Okay, that's an important step. Okay, let's take out a common factor. ax and 2x, the common factor is x. I'll be left with a plus 2. For ay plus 2y, the common factor is y. I'll be left with a plus 2. Good. Now you notice these both have a binomial common factor. Okay. These both have an a plus 2 that I can factor out. If I factor out that a plus 2, I'll be left with a plus 2 times x plus y. Okay. Good. So, You'll notice I got the same answer for both of these. I mean, the factors are in a different order, but we know the order of multiplication doesn't matter. So these terms are equivalent. Okay? a plus 2 times x plus y is the same as x plus y plus a plus 2. So as long as we make sure to group terms that have a common factor together, okay, we'll end up with the same answer. Okay, good. Now, let's try another one. Okay? So we have a 9x squared plus a 15x plus a 3x plus a 5. Okay. So in order to factor this, you'll notice that there's nothing that all of these terms have in common to factor out. But if we group them into two groups of two, we should be able to do some work. Okay. So we'll notice that you know the 9x squared and the 3x, those have um, a 3 and an x in common. Okay. So we could factor those. We can put those as a group. And this 15x and the 5, we could common factor a 5 out of those two. So if we 
go ahead and put those into groups. Okay, so I'm going to put the 9x squared and the 3x into a group and the 15x and the 5 into a group. Separate with an addition sign, okay, because when we add polynomials we can drop the brackets and this will keep our equation equivalent to what we had at the beginning. Okay, now let's do the common factoring of each group independently. So the common factor of 9x squared and 3x is 3x, okay. If we divide 9x squared by 3x, we get 3x. If we divide 3x by 3x, we get 1. Okay, that's not a nice looking one. That's better. Okay. Now if I common factor this binomial, okay, I can take a 5 out, and I'm left with 3x plus 1. And once again, you'll notice these terms have a common binomial. They both have a 3x plus 1. So let's take out that 3x plus 1. When we divide both of these terms by 3x plus 1, they will cancel, and we're left with a 3x plus 5. So there's my answer for that one. Okay. Good. So let's move on to number 12, where we're going to have to deal with some subtraction signs. Okay, but if we follow the same steps, we'll be fine. So just a quick reminder, when we factor by grouping, we have to separate the groups with an addition sign. Okay, that's an important part. Okay, because separating with an addition sign keeps it equivalent. Okay, because when we add polynomials, we just drop the brackets, and we're back to our original question. Okay, so let's keep that in mind when we do this question. Okay, we can group together. Okay, you'll, first of all, you'll notice there's nothing we can common factor from all, all of these terms. Okay. That's the first thing you always look for when doing factoring questions, if there's anything you can, co you can common factor from all of the terms. Okay. And, you, you know, there's nothing I can common factor from all of them. Okay. You look at the first three and you might think, hey, maybe I can so, take a four out from all of them, or maybe a two. But then you look at the nine, and that, that ruins all those ideas. Okay. So, but what we can do, if we group 16x squared and 12x together, okay, we could take out a 4x. That would be good. And if we group the 12x and the negative 12x and the 9 together, we could take out a 3. Okay? So let's do that grouping. Okay? So let's put the 16x squared and the minus 12x together. Okay? And let's also put the negative 12x and the 9 together. And separate them with an addition sign. Okay? You'll notice because of this addition sign between the polynomials, if we dropped all these brackets, we will be right back to this exact equivalent equation. Okay? If I had accidentally subtracted, uh, separated these with a, a subtraction sign, that would have changed the integer value of both of those terms, and it would have it would have given us um, an, an equation that's not equivalent to our original, and we can't do that. Okay? So you have to separate it with an addition sign. Okay? Good. So. If I now common factor each of these binomials independently, like I said earlier, I can take out a 4x from the 16x squared and the negative 12x, and that gives me 4x minus 3. And I can also take out a, okay, I have a negative 12x and a 9. Remember when there's a negative sign in the first term, I always want to get rid of that. Okay, so I can take out a negative 3. Okay, negative 12x divided by negative 3. Give me 4x. 9 divided by negative 3 will give me negative 3. Okay. Now let's simplify this. We have a plus negative 3 there. We know a positive and a negative beside each other. The negative sign wins. Okay, so I'm left with a minus 3 times 4x minus 3. Okay. And you'll notice that both we can do some binomial common factoring now because we both have a 4x minus 3 as a factor. So if we take out the 4x minus 3, okay, that gives me, I'm going to take out the 4x minus 3, and what I'm going to be left with is 4x minus 3, actually. Okay. So I took out the 4x minus 3, those cancelled, and what I'm left with is 4x minus 3. I can simplify this further. I can write this as 4x minus 3 squared. Okay. 
I have 4x minus 3 times 4x minus 3, something times itself. So I have 4x minus 3 squared. Okay. So in fact, I'm left with a perfect square trinomial. Good. So that's all for what we're going to learn today. What we learned, just a quick review. We learned that factoring is the opposite of expanding. Okay. So factoring is the opposite of FOIL. And this is useful for going from standard form to factored form. To find the greatest common factor of a polynomial, we find the greatest common factor of the coefficient and the variable part, and then combine them. To factor a polynomial, we remove the greatest common factor as the first factor, and then divide each term by the greatest common factor to obtain the second. Okay. And we learned that a common factor is not necessarily a monomial. We were able to common factor binomials, okay, right here, remember? And also to factor by grouping, we factor groups of two terms with a common factor. So we put them into groups that we know have common factors, and that produces a binomial common factor that we're able to do. Okay? So that's all we've learned today. Here's the homework to try. That's it for this lesson. Have a good day. Have a good day.